today we will discuss one of the most important topic which is related to blood that is hematinics. So blood is a fluid connective tissue which is present in the body and the top hematinics are the agents which are used in the formation of blood. So these are the agents which are used in the formation of blood. So blood or else the RBC the red blood cells which are present in the blood are produced from the bone marrow of our body. So these RBC or else the blood contains various type of cells but RBC is the one which contains hemoglobin and hemoglobin contains in turn a ferric ion and that is iron in the form of ferric or ferrous state. These hematinics include the agents like uh, vitamin B12, iron as well as folic acid. Iron plays a very major important role in the formation of blood as I told you because iron is the metal ion or the iron is the compound which is present in the hemoglobin that is in the state of ferrous or ferric form. So, let us see in detail about the iron as a hematinic. So iron exists or else it is prepared in two forms. One is oral form as the other and the other one is parenteral form. The oral forms of iron include ferrous sulfonate, ferrous gluconate as well as ferrous fumarate as well as the iron is prepared in the parental form also like iron dextron, iron sorbitol citric acid complex, iron sucrose complex as well as iron sodium and gluconate complex. What does these do or else how these hematinics in the form of iron preparations act? So these hematinics if there is any shortage of blood or else if there is uh, uh, the blood is not functioning properly or if there is any problem in the blood, these hematinics are given in the formation of blood. So, what does this iron do? It go and binds to the hemoglobin or it aids in the formation of blood by forming a complex and thereby it, form, it helps in the formation of blood. And what are the therapeutic uses of these iron preparations? These iron preparations are mainly used in the treatment of various types of anemia like iron deficiency anemia and these are also used in the prophylaxis of iron deficiency anemia. For example, in the conditions like pregnancy or lactating women or in the infants or growing children as well as in professional blood donors, first we have to go for the prophylaxis treatment where if there is, in order to find out if there is any anemia deficiency or else if there is any iron deficiency or if the person is suffering from anemia. So in these conditions, the iron preparations are given as hematinics. What are the adverse effects of these hematinics or else the adverse effects of these iron preparations? So uh, oral preparations as well as parental preparations have their own side effects. So the, what are the adverse effects of these oral preparations? The adverse effects include they causes some disturbances in the GID like it causes vomiting, it causes nausea or else it causes some kind of epigastric pain and in severe doses it may also cause constipation as well as diarrhea depending upon the condition of the patient. It sometimes what happens is like if we take it orally it sometimes causes staining of the teeth also and if at all if there occurs in or else the dosage of these iron preparations iron oral preparations are high then sometimes it may cause blackening of stools also. So what, what we can do or else how the pre prevention can be made in order to uh, in order to antagonize these adverse effects. So the prevention can be taken first thing we have to take immediately after the meals or else we can take along with the meals also in order to prevent these side effects. What are the adverse effects of these parental preparations? So parental preparations also have various adverse effects like once we inject or else if we give these parental iron preparations in the form of IV then it causes some kind, sort of pain at the local site where the injection is given and the other one is it causes some kind of redness or blushing at the particular area where the IV root or else the injection is given and if the dose exceeds it may cause common side effects like fever, headache and joint pains also. In severe conditions it may cause hypersensitivity reactions. These are the reactions where it releases excessive amount of allergens in the body and thereby it causes redness of the skin. It forms flares and some, some sort of blisters on the skin also. 
Then see the other kind of hematinx that is vitamin B12. Vitamin B12, it is a very important vitamin or else it is an essential vitamin for the body. If there is any deficiency occurring in vitamin B12 as well as folic acid, it causes uh, blood disorders or else it causes anemia kind of disorders. So, what are the vitamin B12 preparations? There are three kind of preparations. One is cyanocobalamine, balamine, and the, uh, one is cyanocobalamine, and the other one is hydroxocobalamine, and the other one is methylcobalamine. How this vitamin B12 acts? This vitamin B12, it essentially involves two important reactions. One is the conversion of homocysteine to methionine and the conversion and the other one is the conversion of methyl melanoin coenzyme A to succinyl coenzyme A. These are the very two important biotransformation reactions which are undergoing in the body. These mainly involve in the metabolism of various chemical compounds in, and this reaction takes place in the liver. So these two reactions are very important reactions in the biotransformation of various organic compounds in the body and this vitamin B12 plays a very important or a major role in these two reactions. So, for what happens? This vitamin B12 deficiency, when there is any deficiency in the vitamin B12, folate accumulates as N-methyl tetrahydrofolate. So, when this tetrahydrofolate is accumulated in such a form, first tetrahydrofolate, it depletes and then it forms N-methyl tetrahydrofolate and when this compound accumulates, then it causes or else it decreases the production of RBC. When the RBC production is decreased, then it causes various types of anemia or blood disorders. So here we can see the pictorial representation. The homocysteine conversion is taking place. Homocysteine is converted to methionine and tetrahydrofolate or uh, N-methyl tetrahydrofolate conversion is taking place to tetrahydrofolate. When this tetrahydrofolate depletes, then it, it forms the accumulation of folate in the body where it causes or else decrease the production of RBC. And these two main reactions are involved in the conversion of cobalamine to methyl cobalamine. This is a very important biotransformation reaction which is undertaking in the body. What are the uses of this vitamin B12 preparations? These vitamin B12 preparations are mainly used in two types of anemia that is megaloblastic anemia as well as pernicious anemia. So what is megaloblastic anemia? Megaloblastic anemia is a condition when there occurs inhibition of DNA synthesis in the production of RBC. So RBC is, will be produced in the bone marrow of the body and during this production of RBC, the DNA which is synthesized or the, the DNA which is useful for the synthesis of red blood cells, when there occurs this inhibition of DNA synthesis, then there will be no production of RBC where it causes megaloblastic anemia. And the other condition or else the other useful therapeutic use of this vitamin B12 injection is pernicious anemia. Pernicious anemia is a condition where there occurs decreased red blood cell count if vitamin B12 is not absorbed in the stomach. So when we take vitamin B12, it, ha it will be distributed all over the body. So in the stomach region or else in the gastric region, if vitamin B12 is not absorbed, then it won't aid in the production of RBC where it causes this pernicious type of anemia. Let us see the pharmacokinetics of this vitamin B12. So what happens to the vitamin B12 preparations when it is taken inside the body? So one thing, let us see the absorption, how it is getting absorbed. So here vitamin B12, it binds to the intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor is a substance which is produced from the parietal cells of the stomach. In the stomach, we have various types of cells in the stomach wall. So parietal cells are one of the cells which release an intrinsic factor. So this vitamin B12 will bind to this intrinsic factor and thereby it prevents the digestion of this vitamin B12. So when this vitamin B12 is not digested, then it will be as such entering into the intestine region. So in the intestine region, a place called ileum or is the part called ileum, it contains some kind of hairy projections called as villi. 
So this vitamin B12 and interesting factor compound, it attaches to that brushy border of that ileum, the hair-like projections of that ileum. In this villi, the absorption of the compounds takes place. So here the intrinsic factor will release the vitamin B12 at the site of villi of ileum and thereby the absorption of B12 takes place very efficiently in ileum region. And this uh, whatever the intrinsic factor as well as vitamin B12 which are getting absorbed in the ileum, they undergo a process called as pinocytosis. Pinocytosis is such a process where the liquid or else fluid is taken into the cell by projecting some kind of vesicles. If a cell membrane is there, it for, it shows some kind of projections or some, some kind of vesicles like structure where this fluid is intaken and there it is absorbed. In this way, the vitamin B12 is getting absorbed very efficiently in the ileum region. Distribution. How this vitamin B12 is distributed? Vitamin B12 is distributed mainly in the form of transcobalamin 2. So this vitamin B12, it is distributed all over the body. First, when it is absorbed into the body, it undergoes biotransformation reaction and it forms transcobalamin 2 compound. So this transcobalamin 2, which is an active compound of vitamin B12, it is distributed all, all over the body, including each and every cell present in the, uh, present in the body. And storage, how it is stored. If there is any excessive amount of vitamin B12 present in the body, apart from it getting absorbed, then it is stored in the liver. Approximately, if there is any excess amount of orals, the maximum capacity of storage of this vitamin B12 is 300 to 500 micrograms. If there is any excessive amount of vitamin B12 is present more than its storage in capacity, then it is excreted out of the body. How it is excreted or else how the elimination process of this vitamin B12 takes place. So normally or if there is any small amount of or else if there is any traces of the vitamin B12 present in the body, they are excreted in the form in the urine or else if there is any large amounts of uh, vitamin B12 present in the body or else when the vitamin B12 is given through parenterally then a large amount of vitamin B12 when it is exceeding its dose or else it can't be absorbed in the body then this egg is excreted through urine oil as well. It depends or else the elimination of this vitamin B12 depends on the uh, administ route of administration as well as the dose which is administered to the patient. Let us see the other uh, compound of hematinics that is folic acid. In this folic acid also it is prepared in two forms. One is folic acid and the other one is folinic acid. This folinic acid is the active form of this folic acid. So for how this folic acid acts? This is also, folic acid also is a major compound which is very useful in the blood or else in the formation of blood. So if there is any deficiency of this folic acid occurring in the body, it also causes various types of anemia conditions. So these folic acid preparations are given in order as a supplement for folic acid. So the, mainly the therapeutic uses of this folic acid preparations include they are used in the treatment of megaloblastic anemia. As we have told earlier, it is the inhibition of DNA synthesis in the production of RBC and also it is given as a supplement during pregnancy for the proper growth of the baby or else for the proper production of the red blood cells or else the formation of the connective tissue called blood in the baby, this folic acid plays a very important role in pregnancy. And the other one is in order to prevent deficiency, the, in the uh, conditions like malabsorption syndromes or anti-epileptic therapy or methotrexate toxicity. In these conditions also there may be deficiency of this folic acid. So in order to prevent the deficiency of this folic acid in these conditions, the patients who are suffering with these kind of conditions or else the patients who are undergoing anti-epileptic therapy, we have to suggest them for folic acid, uh, folic acid preparations because there may occur deficiency of the folic acid in these syndromes or in these disorders. So it is essential or else it is recommended for a patient to take folic acid preparations in these diseases or disorder condition. 
pharmacokinetics of these folic acid what happens to the folic acid once it is entering into the body so how this folic acid is getting absorbed into the body this folic acid is getting absorbed into the body by the hydrolysis of the compound called as dietary folates when these dietary folates are taken in taken into the body it undergo hydrolysis by a process called as conjugation conjugation is a type of biotransformation reaction which is occurring in the body for the metabolism of the compounds it majorly takes place in the organ called as liver so most of the metabolic reactions are take are happening in the liver itself so when these dietary fibers undergo hydrolysis it forms monoglucomate compounds. So when this monoglutamate compounds, when many monoglutamate compounds are formed, they combine to form polyglutamate forms. So these polyglutamate forms are getting absorbed in the body. And major of the folic acid preparations are absorbed in the proximal jejunum. So this is the pictorial representation. We saw uh, the methionine homocysteine is converting to methionine in the form of methionine synthase. This is one of the major important conversion which is also aided by vitamin B12. So uh, along with vitamin B12, this folic acid also plays a very important role. And we can see it is it is mainly aiding in the inhibition of synthesis of uh, DNA in the red blood cells. We can see the folic acid which is aiding in the inhibition of synthesis of DNA thereby where it is promoting the production of RBC. How it is distributed? So majority of the folic acid preparations are distributed all over the body via bloodstream only. This is recommended to give in the IV form and when this it is given in IV form more amount of or else the blood bioavailability of this boli, uh, folic acid is more. So and thereby it is distributed in the body via bloodstream and storage normally only 5 to 20 mg is stored in the liver when the capacity of the storage of this folic acid is exceeding in the liver then it is excreted or eliminated out of the body so the elimination how does this folic acid is eliminated usually it is eliminated in the urine or else it is eliminated in the stools and this elimination undergoes or else it is carried out by a process called as catabolism Catabolism is a process where complex molecules are converted to simpler molecules by releasing of the energy. So this complex forms of folic acid are break down into simple forms and they are eliminated in the uh, from uh, uh, they are eliminated out of the body in the form in the urine as well as in the stools. How this vitamin B12 and folic acid are related or how they play a major important role. One thing, vitamin B12 and folic acid preparations are well tolerable. In the sense, if we give this vitamin B12 and folic acid to a patient, they don't get tolerated or else it does not show any tolerance effect for that patient. And the other one is, there are no remarkable adverse effects of this vitamin B12 as well as folic acid as compared to iron preparations. Iron preparations have a lot of side effects, but these vitamin B12 as well as folic acid don't have remarkable side effects uh, out of all these hematinic preparations.